Hey everybody, how you doing? My name is Dave Allen. I am the proud owner of a P70 Yamaha digital piano. It is a great piano. I've had it for probably about seven years and um, the only thing with this piano is after over time the keys be start to become noisy. To the point where when I'm playing pianissimo it's not pianissimo, it's rattling crazy. It's so annoying now that I decided that I don't want to go on anymore, so I went and ordered a repair kit. Uh, go on to Yamaha 24-7. Um, you can order the, the parts directly. Um, you can just search online and get the Adobe PDF service manual. I didn't have to pay for the service manual, some people had, I just searched enough until I found it. And uh, it will give you detailed instructions on how to take it apart and replace the pads. I looked at the service manual, it doesn't give the kind of detail that I think <laughs> that I would want, so uh, just so I have my own documentation and then of course anybody else that is going through the same thing. You want to um, use this for your own yeah, switching out the pads, then um, you can use it. Um, what what it is is there's a hammer in here, and I'll show you later. It's a wire that is the weight of the key when you hit it, and it actually hits the action actually hits against the pads, and those pads over time wear out, and there's little divots that get pushed into the pad and so hopefully what I'm going to do is replace those pads and um, it'll be quiet again. So um, here we go. Okay so the first step of course is to get the parts. Uh, you can't get the parts um, just uh, anywhere like Amazon or anything you have to go through Yamaha 24-7 and uh, what you'll do is you'll order part uh, part numbers, and I'll put that up on you, the YouTube comments. But this is, uh, you have to order specific part numbers. I recommend actually calling because I tried to go online and order it through their online interface. Unfortunately, the P70 is discontinued, so if you search for P70 in the uh, 20, uh, Yamaha 24-7, it will not be there. Um, so... You kind of have to, I, I called and uh, the lady there gave me the parts and we did the transaction and it showed up in about three days. Um, there's two, there's two uh, major pa uh, parts. This is the felt that will be used that, that the hammers hit. And then there's a lower felt that the hammers hit. So you need a lower, this, this one here, and an upper. The manual says the first thing you got to do is uh, unscrew. There are, believe it or not, 72 screws. And if you look, you can see all 72. There's, and when you flip yours over too, you'll see all these screws. There's screws at the top. And then there's screws way down in there, down in these little pockets. So you're going to have 72 in all. I went ahead and took all of them out, counted them, there's 72, and there they are. I put them in a baggie so I wouldn't lose any of them and put those aside. The next step is to actually take this off. It actually comes off really, really easy. I can Here's one hand and I can lift it up with one hand and take it off. And that's the key assemblies. And the thing that's going on, if you can look, if you see, you see that the felt has, has been be basically beaten in by the weight of the action. Basically, when you, when you, the key is depressed right now, so it would be normally resting like that when you're, when it's uh, upright, when it's flipped over. And then when you would press the key down, it would do that, and then it rests back down. So over time, that 
you can even just hear it. It's it's just kind of been compressed and therefore there's not much padding in there. Also, you'll notice that there's a little bit of the you know the keys that you play the most you can see a little bit of divoting there in the pad on the I guess that would be the upper pad this the one on top here since it's upside down is the lower that is the upper so the first thing after you've taken the cover off the service manual says to take off this circuit board so that you can basically release this ribbon which is going to allow you to pull the entire assembly out hopefully so the weird thing about this that I wanted to document is that these plugs are not plugs they are terminators so in back in the day there's you don't just pull this out if you were just pull this out you might actually hurt it so on either side you'll see that there's this little groove there's little lips there and you're just gonna pop that up see so you just kind of it's releasing the tension on the wires and now the wire will just kind of come out it's it's weird it feels weird because it feels like you're pulling the wire out of the plug but you're not that's how it's designed so then you would move that up and away tuck that somewhere you're going to do that again with this big one. So they're not all they're not all easy to do obviously. There's this one, did one. Could probably do this easier. I'm sure there's a tool. <laughs> okay, they're both up and I just pull it out. So when you and now the trick is to be very careful with these because it's been a while. These have been sitting like that for a long time. Plastic hardens over time, so take your time doing this. The next thing to do is take the four screws out. You're going to take this one out, that one out, over here, and over there, and over there. Okay, so I've taken out the circuit board. And I just, I just unscrewed the four. I, like I showed you before, I undid the two things and then I, I just pulled this out. It feels like you might break it, but you're not going to. It's a, it's a self-contained cord that, uh, that's not going to, the leads aren't going to break. It would just go into that one here. So the next thing we got to do is take this plate off and take that plate off. So that this cable can... Okay, so we've removed the circuit board, the two plates, there are some wire catches too, don't forget to put those aside. I removed the screws out of this plate, and we'll zoom over here, and I removed the screws out of this plate. And at the end of the day, I am just meticulous, so I put all the screws in here. I have a circuit board, I have two plates and two wire wraps. Set those aside on a towel, and we'll proceed. Okay, so after you remove those screws, then there's also screws that are right here, here. You can't see them here because I've taken them out, but there's eight of them, and they're the ones that actually hold the whole assembly in there. When you're taking out these screws, they're pretty hard to get out. Do not strip them. Take push down pretty good pressure and and just continually put a little bit of pressure until they come loose and then get them out. If you strip them, you're you're gonna not be able to get it out. It's gonna be difficult. And this is my basically my assembly. And I've tried to keep it in pretty much the way that I took it out. It's really important to do this kind of thing, to separate things into steps so that when you put everything back together, you're putting them in the right place. Don't fly through this. Take your time.